this is Udo Dirkler, the singer of UDO, and you listen to That Metal Interview Podcast. Metal Interview. What's up, guys and girls? Thank you for joining us once more on the favorite podcast of every metalhead and rocker and thrasher in the world, maybe. Anyways, thank you guys. Appreciate your company. And on this episode, we have a legendary frontman, former frontman for Accept, and uh, currently of UDO, uh, we're speaking of Udo Dirk Schneider, the German legend, a hard rock heavy metal legend for sure. Uh, he's here to promote a new album. Touchdown is the name of the album, dropping August 23rd. Atomic Fire Records presents. So anyways, to all the Accept fans in the house listening, this is a treat for you guys. And uh, Udo returns to the show here to promote this album, Touchdown. You guys can pick it up very soon here. Unless you were listening to this episode after August 23rd, then you guys have access to the whole album. So anyways, right now you guys can check out a couple of uh, videos on online, YouTube and all that. Touchdown was the song you guys just heard. A complete badass rocker, heavy metal for sure. So anyways, let's go straight into the interview with the legendary Udo Dirk Schneider. Here we are. Uh, well, first of all, welcome back to the show. Uh, you were on the show about two years ago here uh, with us. So thank you for making time again. Awesome. Oh, okay. It's always if you have put something new out, you have to talk about, uh, about this. Right. We'll have some new questions. <laughs> Um, okay. New album this time. It's called Touchdown, dropping yes. in, in, in August 23rd. Are you excited for this album? Yeah, I'm really exciting. I mean, it's a straightforward album. It's definitely more more aggressive than uh, than the, the last album, Game Over. It's really straightforward, forward, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the whole album. Which is your favorite song on this album? Oh, let's say uh, my really Personal favorite song, favorite song is uh, Betrayer. And Touchdown. How do you come up with the lyrics, uh, brand new lyrics? Do you, uh, what inspires you? Do you read a book or do you watch a movie uh, or? No, I mean, uh, let's say on this album, definitely there are some songs that are like Isolation Band, for example, is a song about, about the pandemic uh, situation what we had, you know, you can go, you cannot go to a restaurant, you cannot go to your brother, sister, or my son or whatever. I mean, uh, you have to stay home, and uh, that was very easy to write lyrics about this. And then we had uh, the song "The Flood," that was like uh, we had a big flood, flood here in, in Germany. So, and the house of my son was completely gone. It's also a true story. So, it was was easy to write lyrics about this. And then we had the song "Fight for Your Right." It's uh, a song, you know, our guitar player Andrei Smirnov, she was living in, in Ukraine and, you know, this is like about the, the war between Russia and Ukraine. So thank God she's out of the Ukraine and living now, he's living now in Germany. So in a way it was very easy, but the rest of the songs, you know, is like what has happened around, uh, around us. Uh, normally uh, it's easy if you watch the news, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. And to get to get so so much uh, ideas for lyrics about political things, social things, 
for the climate or whatever, you know. So in a way, it just have a look around you and then you have another, another ideas. That's true, huh? We're living in weird times. Uh, there's oh, yeah. wars going on. There's uh, You watch the news, like you say, and there you go. You, there's a bunch of songs yeah. right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very it, easy. It's real sad, but true, you know, what's going on over there in Ukraine. But uh, Oh, yeah. This yeah. is like, I mean, of course. I mean, also, um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we are very well informed, of course. Uh, Andre has uh, still contact with some people in Ukraine, you know. And also, we have also a lot of contacts to Russian people, you know yeah. I mean? <clears throat> and also, you know, for them, it's like they cannot say what they want. They're really scared about this, you know. They are, in a way, not happy with this, but if, if they say something wrong, they're directly in jail, you know. This is also a yeah. strange situation going on, really strange situation. Here's a dumb question, Udo. Uh, do you have a, a, a big fan base in Russia? Yes, I mean, I mean, it, it definitely, I mean, uh, UDO quite big in Russia, you know, yeah. we, I mean, normally we do 30 or 35 shows in Russia, you know, and uh, oh. I mean, this, this, this market uh, and also Ukraine is gone for us, you know, and I mean, if you put, let's say, the, the, the war and political things on the side, I mean, I feel really sorry for the for, for our fans, you know, that we, we cannot play in these countries anymore at the moment, you know, and uh, yes, uh, tough, uh, tough things are happening, you know, uh, yeah. but it's not, it's not possible to do a tour in Russia at the moment, you know, then uh, they have big problems, you are definitely banned on the rest of the Western countries, you know, then they say, okay, if you do Russia, then please then do only Russia, but in the rest of the countries, no way. Yeah, we usually don't get political, but we hope for the best uh, for the Russian metal fans, oh, yeah. the, the Russian people, oh, yeah. the Ukraine, of course, all the, the, what's going on. We yeah. wish them the best. Yeah. I'm sure yes. they, they're, they're uh, craving metal and rock. But, oh, yeah, uh, they're, miss, they're missing. Nobody, nobody's coming at the moment, you know. But, uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really sad, you know. But yeah. anyway, it is, it is like it is at the moment, and we will see... Oh, the future, yeah, uh, what the future will bring, you know, so, yeah. wait and see. We'll wait and see for things to get better. Um, yes, ho hopefully. Back to Touchdown, why the title Touchdown? What's behind the meaning? Uh, we know we have the American football sport, Touchdown, but why the title? Yeah, why the title? I mean, so we, uh, we, we didn't have a title for this album, you know, it was like, oh, oh we want to call this album. So, and then we was in on the South American tour, we were sitting at the airport in a sports bar, and then the football game was going on, and then we heard always like this touchdown, touchdown, and I said, hey guys, this is the right title for this album, you know? We also make a touchdown with this album, we bring everything, our music, over the line, you know? And the, the, the football game, I mean, I'm not a huge football fan, but I mean, I'm watching that here also in, in Germany. We have a lot of things going on now here in Germany, Germany with football, you know, and um, so uh, then say, hey, it fits perfectly. This this game is really powerful. It's like aggressive. It's like, yeah, it fits together with the album. So, and then we call the album Touchdown. Yeah, it's a cool title. So does yeah, it, it is. Yeah, very cool. Uh, does anybody else help you with lyrics, or do you do all the lyrics? No, I mean what I'm doing uh, at the last. Two albums, yeah, exactly the two, last two albums I work on the lyrics now with my son. Before I did it alone, in a way. And uh, now it works perfectly, you know. I mean, he's also coming up with ideas, very interesting. And also I work with my son on, he now also on melodies for vocals, you know. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, it's a different generation. My son is 30 years old, you know. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they, have, they have different ideas, you know, and I'm... Let's say a really open, open minded uh, guy, and I said, okay, let's try it, you know. And then sometimes he come up and said, hey, then maybe you can think maybe like this, or I have an idea, can you try this? So, and it worked out per perfectly. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that I can work with him together like this, you know. That's very cool that you have your, everybody knows you have your son in the band, Sven. Uh, great musician, yeah. great drummer, awesome talent. Uh, thanks to your genes. <laughs> uh, do you guys uh, talk about something else besides music, like when you're not 
holding he's not holding drumsticks you're not holding the mic do you guys talk about yeah. car, cars or, yeah. or animals or no i mean we are we are quite uh, uh, yeah with the family you know he's he has two kids now already uh so i'm a grandfather two times already <laughs> yeah and uh, cool. yeah i mean you know, also i mean i go to his house you know see see uh, see the kids and uh Having barbecue, talking normal things, you know, about life, not like always, like music, you know. Very cool. I can imagine some of those conversations. Very cool. I have two kids, so uh, here's a different, yeah. a different question. Peter is still playing with you, right? Peter Baltis. Yes, Peter Baltis is uh, back. <laughs> wow. I can say he did play. I mean, it was also not planned, you know. I mean, uh, he was helping us out. Our bass player was ill, you know. He was collapsed. Left in, in, in Munich on the third show on the Game Over album on the Game Over tour, and uh, so and then for me it was like, hmm, <laughs> who can help us out? And then of course I was working already with Peter on some some stuff like We Are One album and also on uh, Dirk Schneider and the Old Game. So and then I called him and I said, hey Peter, we have a big problem. Uh, and then he said, yeah, okay, give me one hour. I call you back. He called me back and I said, okay, I'm coming. So, oh. that, but it was, but it was not planned that he become a, a permanent member. You know, he said, "Okay, I help you out as long as you need to recover." So, and then it was, I think, in in uh, also in South America, we get an email from uh, from our bass player, and he said, "I'm, uh, I don't want to be a member of UDO anymore." Okay. I mean, don't, I don't ask me. What, uh, everybody was like, "Hey." Why? Where's the where's the problem? And uh, so, and then we was also sitting together having a dinner in a restaurant in South America, and then we were talking about okay, somebody has an idea who can be the new bass player, and somebody knows a, a good bass player, and then Peter said, uh, I would love to be the new bass player in UDO, <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and then. Yeah, and then uh, he said, "Okay, give me two days," and I said, "Okay." But he has to sort out some things in in America, and he's living in Florida, you know. And then he's doing a lot of stuff in in studios and working with some bands and whatever. So, and then two days later, he said, "Okay, I'm in." I said, "Wow, uh, okay." <laughs> so, and, he, and then he's. Uh, in a way, the new member of UDO, the new bass player, you know. But okay, for me, it's not new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's now, it's like, I don't know, it's a, it's, it's a really nice feeling to have him back also on, on stage, you know. Okay, he was not involved in composing uh, on, on Touchdown, on the Touchdown album, but he was playing the bass. And uh, so, I mean, what can I say? No. Awesome. This is awesome for so, us fans. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, yeah, I mean, everybody said, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, no, sometimes things that happened, you know. How does it feel? I mean, uh, having the, the same sound, the same bass sound on stage from the 80s, you know, the, the that except sound, it must feel exciting, yeah. right? Very cool. Yeah, I mean, of course, Peter has his own sound, you know, and then he was putting on that sound also on, on, the, on the, the Touchdown album. And of course, it's like he... I can explain this. His, his bass playing is really, he makes the music alive, you know. He's, yeah. uh, I mean, he's, for me, he's one of the best bass players in heavy metal, you know. Oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, what sure. can I say? I mean, it's definitely also now the rest of the band is like, wow, it is just a completely different thing now. And, uh, yeah. I wow. mean, he's also, Peter is a really down-to-earth guy, you know, it's a lot of fun, we, we, were, we are laughing a lot on tour and I don't know, it's, it's really funny and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have him back and uh, it's uh, strange, but I'm looking forward over to the next album when he's involved in composing songs, you know, and so <laughs> that will be also very, very interesting. Well, everybody knows you quit except a long time ago and you, you stopped playing those songs and and then you started playing accept songs again right is that right were people asking for the songs or oh yeah i mean uh, <laughs> we have a situation i can go under dirk schneider then we only play accept songs and we have udo you know and uh, uh, especially on the festival uh, season uh, a lot of 
people they asking, oh, is that possible you come on the dog set and play, etc. We said, yeah, no problem, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. And uh, so that's a good thing, you know, I mean, uh, but when we, when we go as UDO, we don't play any except songs. Okay. Maybe, maybe, no, not maybe, I mean, I have, we have to do this. If we come on tour in America now, after three times cancelling America about the pandemic stuff, now finally we are coming, beginning of November, the tour will start at the beginning of November until the middle of December, so far what I heard. And uh, so everybody's like, they have to play ball to the wall. He said, yeah, I know ball to the wall, without ball to the wall, America is not possible. <laughs> so <laughs> that, will be, that will be definitely a song on, on, this, on, on the set list, you know. Are you guys doing Metal Hearts? It's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's a good, we will see maybe, maybe, let's say maybe, maybe two except songs we put in the, in the set list in America, you know. But we will see, maybe it can be Metal Heart, maybe it can be Path of the Shark, but we can change that also from night to night if we want, you know. So keep it interesting. But uh, yeah. definitely balls will in there. Yeah, I saw you posted a flyer. On social media, it said a uh, Rock Cars 2024 Dirk Schneider. So that's the accept set right there. Yeah, I mean, of course, that, that, uh, that's what I said. I mean, in yeah. the, on the festival seasons, I mean, a lot of people then promoters say, "Oh, can you come as Dirk Schneider?" We said, "Yeah, no problem. I don't have any problems with that." And I mean, now with Peter, it's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys should have the name accept instead of Wolf. You guys are you have more original members than than he does, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean, also I'm also in the bank. I'm still working with Stephen Kaufman. That means we members. Oh wow! Him, you know. Wow, that'd yeah, be great. So, uh, yeah. So, but um, anyway, I mean, this is a different story. You know. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a different story. Uh, do you ever get tired, Udo, of of uh, getting up in the morning and uh, I gotta go walk around the airports again, and or or getting a van or getting a bus? Sit in a bus, sit in a van backstage, and play live. Let's let's say uh, <laughs> doing with the night ladder is it's easy going, you know. But if you go on festivals, you know, you have to fly, and then we have to drive for two hours somewhere to the festival place and stuff like that. This is sometimes, you know, it's always like waiting, waiting on the airport, and the, the plane is delayed and. Yeah. It's, uh, this is like sometimes, you know, like, oh, here we go. But, okay, it's, it's a part of, of the thing, but and, uh, in the summer, I mean, you don't do any, let's say, uh, 50 shows or whatever, you know. Maybe you do, what we did is like around 19 or 20 uh, shows, festivals, you know, in the summer. So that, in a way, it's easy, let's say, in this yeah. way. But sometimes, you know, you sit at the airport and say, oh, here we go. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, it's a part of the whole thing, you know. It's a part of the show, yeah. Walking yeah. walk, airports and whatever. Some people don't know oh, that. Yeah. Some people don't know what you guys go through, you know, waiting around in airports and all that. It's just uh, another different story. Oh, you, you don't see it on I YouTube. Don't think, I don't think if uh, some people go with us on tour or on festivals uh, stuff like in the summer, I think, I don't know what they're thinking. We are on holiday or <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, being on stage, the, the one hour or whatever, one hour and a half is the easy part. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's in a way the easy part, yeah. <laughs> it's really more relaxing than waiting at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so what inspires you to get up and pick up a pen or pick up a mic, Udo? Uh, what inspires you after all these years? Is it the fan base or what, what makes you do that? Keep going, you know. It is, it is uh, in first place that I'm still having fun to do this, you know, that's the most important thing. Without fun, uh, I will say, okay, thank you very much and bye-bye. No, and then it's also like, you know, for me, it's like, if you're on tour and on stage and you look in, into the audience, you know, and you see smiling faces and then you see, then you, then you know you did something, you know, you, you, you give the people something, you know, that people enjoy it. And, and that's also, also keeps it going, you know, that if you see, yes, you know, you do something that the people coming to a concert maybe and forget some problems at home and whatever yeah. and just enjoy maybe two hours, you know, in a show and go home with a smile on the face. That's the most important thing. Awesome. Wow, you're very grounded, very, very humble, very cool. 
Um, here's a different question, Udo. I'm not sure if you're aware of the news of, from Ozzy Osbourne uh, canceling gigs left and right because of his health. What's your opinion yeah. on, on him? Do you think he'll ever return to the stage? In my opinion, I say no. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that we, that he will come back. I mean, in some interview, he was he saying, I come just with a, with a, with a chair on, 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 on stage, you know? Yeah. I mean, come on. I, I think this is over. Yeah. I think this is over. For me, personally, that's my person, personal thinking, you know? And uh, I don't know that he is coming. I don't know that he, he will be back on stage. So what's next on your agenda, Udo? What's uh, after these interviews? Uh, what's next on your schedule? Oh, uh, today I'm done with interviews. I did already ten. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the whole nearly the whole day. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But on the schedule is now with the okay into uh, going on 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 uh, yeah on with festivals until the end of October, and then American tour starts and Canada, and then the beginning of next year we start with the European tour. That will be also a long tour. Then go to South America again, Australia, Japan. So and then festivals again. Already the, the, the first festival for next year is already confirmed. So that means we are quite busy. <laughs> wow, next, uh, it's good to hear you're super active, Udo. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Be so b before, it's, uh, key. yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. But before we let you go, would you like to send a message to your fans listening to the podcast? Yeah. What can I say? Uh, I'm really looking forward to come to America again after three time cancelling about the pandemic stuff. That was not possible and now I'm looking forward to come to America and hopefully a lot of people are coming. I hope the people like the new album Touchdown coming out on the 25th of August. And yeah, stay heavy, stay true. Awesome. Thank you, Udo, for your time. Thank you for the great chat. And keep, okay. keep rocking, keep bringing the awesome music and uh, I will see you in Texas soon. Okay. Well, yeah, definitely we play next Texas. I love that already. <laughs> so, yeah, see you there, maybe, and have a nice evening. Awesome. Only good. No, for you, for you is not evening. For you is daytime. Daytime. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have a okay. great. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. So there you have it. Uh, legendary Udo Dirk Schneider speaks to us and gives us his opinion on Ozzy's return to the stage, yes or no. He gives us his opinion right there if you guys paid attention. And he speaks of rejoining uh, with Peter Balti's uh, original bass player. Well, not sure about original, but a bass player from the 80s for the band, except the signature sound and the signature lineup of the 80s. That bassist, Mr. Balti's, is now with Udo on the bass once more. So uh, you got about a 40% original except lineup in Udo's band UDO as it's supposed to be pronounced right so anyways uh, awesome maybe we can get Mr. Baltis on the show soon uh, we'll give it a shot so anyways thank you Udo thank you for joining our show once more to promote touchdown and to speak and give us an update on the whereabouts and an update on the band of course and a uh, big shout out to his son also uh, who is the drummer for Udo. Anyway, so pick it up very soon. Touchdown. You guys can stream Touchdown right now, the song. And uh, as far as our podcast, support or no support, we appreciate your company. If you guys want to swing by our socials and give it a like, share stuff, download stuff, uh, it's all awesome to us and it's all a big help. So subscribe on our YouTube channel, That Metal Interview on YouTube. So thank you guys and girls, metalheads, rockers. And don't forget to keep it metal. Metal Interview.